Honda has updated its motocross lineup for 2023 and heading up the range as always is the new CRF 450. This bike also marks 50 years since the introduction of the original Elsinore. We're at the Appen Motorcycle Track in Southwest Sydney. Let's see what it's all about. The CRF 450R celebrates 50 years of elite motocross heritage for Honda in 2023, marking five decades since the debut of the original 1973 CR250M Elsinore, the Japanese manufacturer's original MX machine. The 450R again heads up Honda's motocross lineup, leading the range with some significant evolutionary updates, including a narrower intake port and longer intake funnel, revised cam profile, and a 2mm smaller HRC developed throttle body. The claim result is a smoother, more manageable power delivery. Elsewhere, frame rigidity is improved courtesy of increased material thickness and steel frame hangers with revised shock spring and fork settings to match. The Honda CRF 450R is priced from $14,028 in regular trim, with a special 50th anniversary edition adding a $400 premium. You put all those changes together, it's evident this is very much an evolution of the 2022 CRF 450, but as a sum of its parts, that was already a great machine, so this technically should be even better again. Now, I'll premise everything here by saying I'm a club and level rider. I'm kind of on a bike every two or three months, so I'm gonna be able to give you some more professional level feedback at the end of this video. But in the meantime, my initial impression was that of all the 450s doing the rounds, this has to be one of the most user friendly and the changes that they have made have made it even easier to access its power and really begin to push the performance envelope on the CRF 450. So first, the engine. There's a lot more mid-range than the 2022 CRF 450. You do lose a little bit at the top, but honestly, as a novice level rider, I'm finding that it's a lot easier to tap into that power curve. This is a bike that will happily chug at the low RPMs. It really kind of finds its cadence at that middling RPM mark, even more so than before. So it's a bike around Appen. You could sit in second, third gear pretty much the entire track and there are no dead spots. It just winds out really nicely through the RPM range. At the top end, there was a couple of times I began to explore it. Honestly, it doesn't feel like it's really missing anything. It pulls really hard all the way to the rev cutout. In terms of chassis changes, they're very incremental again. But for me, the, the fundamental thing with the CRF 450 is that it feels like a stable motorcycle. I had a couple of little moments, especially when the track was slick this morning where it felt a little bit knifey. Um, I know a lot of guys sort of move the triple clamp through the fork a little bit to, to try and counter that because it does sort of ride a little bit higher in the back for 2023, so it's putting more push over the front end. Um, but for me, once I sort of worked with the bike and rode around that, I found it really, really great stability and grip in the front end. I'm a huge fan of the Showa forks. Um, I've just spent you know, a, a day, only a week ago, on the Husqvarna range, and for me, that's the real defining feature. Whereas the Husky has that air fork, it's a little bit brittle, a little bit hard um, upon initial bump compliance. This fork is super plush. It's linear all the way through its stroke. So on pitter patter bumps, all big hits alike, you know exactly what you're getting with the front of the, the CRF 450 and it works really well. Feels like a balanced motorcycle. As I said before, it's a user-friendly 450, so at no point do you really feel like you're overcome by engine inertia or force. This feels like a chassis that's really well mated to the engine. Drawbacks, look, compared to a lot of the European stuff, the front brakes probably don't have as much bite. The clutch itself probably isn't quite as light. Um, maybe it's not quite as nimble as some of the European stuff, but I think for what you get in terms of the user friendliness, the, the ease of power and everything else, it's an easy trade-off to make. There's also power mapping, traction control uh, carried over in the 23 CRF 450. I spent a lot of time in the mellow map and I found even then um, you could ride a gear higher, there was plenty of power on offer, especially around that middling RPM. Stage two, you could kind of ride a gear lower, make use of the red rev bandwidth. Again, still pulled really strong. 
The traction control is really quite benign too, so there's no point where I felt like it was taking huge chunks of power out. It really works with the rider to really do promote confidence out on the circuit. So that's just a few initial notes on the CRF 450. As I said, the changes are incremental for 2023, but as a novice level rider, this is incredible to be able to jump on a 450 and not feel like it's a big imposing machine. You certainly can't say that about some of its peers. The CRF 450R looks set to retain Honda's reputation for build quality and standard parts. Fit with black DID wheels, Dunlop Geo Max 33 tyres and a slick electronic suite. Our test bike feels well put together and strong in a mix of conditions. Okay, so we've touched on some of the basic elements of the new CRF 450 as a clubman level rider. We're fortunate enough today to have Glenn Carney, professional off-road racer, give us his impressions as well. Now, Glenn is in a unique position because you've actually owned the 22 CRF 450. What are your initial impressions of the 23 model? Yeah, that's right, Sam. I um, actually bought one of these not long ago. Just um, liked the look of them to start with and thought I'll give one a go and um, was really impressed with the 22. And then obviously stepping onto this 23 today, yeah, really impressed. Um, I like the bike to be um, have a lot of mid-range power, a lot of torque, and that's the first thing you notice with the, the 23 is probably how much more user-friendly it is. They've talked a lot about the extra mid-range power, potentially at the expense of top range. Do you notice a difference? Do you feel like you're missing anything? Well, maybe there's a little bit less up top, um, but I'm on the track today, I'm just in third gear the whole time, to be honest, and um, just talking it around, and it, it's, it's really good, the torque there. Uh, I think we were talking about it before, maybe sometimes feels like you're going a little bit slower because you don't feel that aggression of the power. Uh, but in actual fact, on the clock and, and the kilometres per hour, you're actually going quicker. So we jumped on these bikes this morning. They virtually hadn't even been run in. They'd had a, a quick check over. I set my sag at 105 millimetres on the back. Glenn, you've dug a bit deeper. What changes have you made and how have they kind of improved the handling of the bike? Um, I found maybe a little bit too much weight transferring to the front end. The, the back was a bit, bit stiff. Um, so what I, to counter that, I ended up pushing the forks through and lifted the front back up. So um, just put a bit more load on the rear, and that, that helped a little bit. And you know, it's not a long way out. Just personal things, you know. Adjusted the levers and the, the brakes to suit for some of my old injuries. But um, yeah, it's it's really quite tunable, and honestly, it's quite close. We haven't changed much. As 450s go, would you agree this is probably one of the easiest ones to ride out of the box? To be fair, I really haven't ridden many of the motocross 450s, um, but yeah, this is definitely an easy bike. It, it is surprising um, how easy it is for how much power it's got, but it's quite, pretty easy to, to hit the traction, uh, sorry, the map control, put it into the aggressive mode, and and uh, give yourself a bit of a bit of a smile under the helmet. Yeah, it's actually really interesting too. You. Uh, mentioned before that you're making use of traction control, the three-stage mapping and all that. What did you find was the sweet spot here, you know, on the slick surface and now that it's drying out? Yeah, I just went through it all like I did with my bike. Um, I had been off the bike for a while when I started only a couple of months ago and suffered with arm pump, like I'm sure a lot of riders do. So I found I was running, you know, heavy traction control and this, the mellow map and that that helped me out till I got a bit of fitness. Today I've been through all the maps. Um, I've actually settled back on just the standard map and no traction, but if I was to run any, like when the rain come out, just the, the lowest setting of traction control. Yeah, awesome. Well, Glenn, thank you so much. It's great to get your inputs. As I said before, the changes they have made, although they seem small and incremental, they really do go a long way to improving the MY23 CRF 450. This is clearly a bike that can handle novice riders and professionals alike.